Welcome students to another day in the kitchen. Uh, today we are going to be working with cooking milk. And as we previously discussed, cooking with milk takes a little bit of finesse. Hopefully you remember that you want to be working with a lower temperature, no more than medium. Um, lower is better, it takes more time, but lower is better, safer, and that you're going to be stirring constantly. Previous to recording, I have done a few things. The first thing I've done is I've gone over this recipe. I have assembled all of my ingredients and all of my equipment. I have not only assembled the vegetables, but I have used a vegetable scrub brush to wash them all off to remove any obvious um, dirt and hopefully in the process of that, removing some bacteria and such. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start right on in. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is working with preparing the vegetables and getting them cooking. They'll cook separate from the sauce, from the white sauce. So the first thing we're doing is working with the vegetables. Our instructions tell us we're going to be using our small saucepan. We're going to be putting in three-fourths cup of water and a little bit of salt. I will put that right on my heat. That is on high. I've got the um, a handle out to the side. It's going to take just a minute for that to come to a boil. I've got my 1 4 teaspoon of salt. Again, this is just going to help enhance the natural flavors of the veggies going in. And then I'm going to place the lid on it. I don't want to have any excess steam blowing out the side. Then I'm going to work with my vegetables. I have a bowl right here to the side that I'm going to be putting them in. That way um, they'll be out of the way but in the way. I'm going to remove on this onion, you'll receive a quarter of an onion. I'm going to remove that outside skin and then with my French knife I'm going to be making some um, slices into it about a quarter of an inch thick. Notice that I've got this hand in a claw. Notice that my thumb and my finger are on the, uh, the blade and then I'm going to use my knife and I'm going to just cut this around using it like the hands of the clock and I'm using the natural, <coughs> excuse me, um, uh, lines in the onion to help me chop that up small. It says that I want to have about a fourth of a cup and this is probably going to be more than a fourth of a cup. To be honest with you, it's okay if there's a little bit more, but I will use the bulk method. And this onion I could choose to put in or I can choose to throw it away, whichever you prefer. The second thing that I, or sorry, the third thing that I'm working with is my carrot. When you peel your carrot, of course, you're going to be using a peeler. And those of you here at school, I especially ask that you peel this peeler or peel this carrot on top of a cutting board. And I'm going to peel it away from me because this is a double-edged knife. And I peel towards me, there's a chance that I could run that right up my, my uh, thumb or across my knuckles. Maybe some of you have done that which is kind of a dangerous and sad thing. Then I can take these and throw them in the garbage can. My instructions tell me that I'm not only going to peel it, but then I'm gonna slice, slice it in one fourth inch medallions. That's like a coin. I'm gonna cut off both ends, because I don't want either one of them in. I don't think that they are very palatable or looking good. And then I'm gonna put this into one fourth inch slices. One fourth inch is um, probably about half the size of your pinky. So if you can use that as a little bit of a, a marker, you want these to all be about the same size. If some of them are fatter than others, then they're gonna take longer to cook. Uh, if they're the really, if they're cut way skinny, then you're gonna end up with ones that are gonna turn to mush and they'll actually cook too long. So as I get here near the end, if I get a little bit nervous about that, I'm gonna move my fingers out of the way. It's a lot easier to move the fingers out of the way than have to stop and, and uh, work with getting band-aids on and all that. The next one is the potato. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and peel this. I could take and leave the skin on. It would give a more rustic look. Um, peel that just with a light running over. It sounds like my vegetables are ready because I'm not quite ready. I'm gonna lower the temperature just a touch because I don't want to lose any excess steam. Maybe you can see that steam coming out. And I don't want to lose that uh, steam or that water because then it means that my vegetables are going to end up with not enough water to cook in because it's escaped from the side. It'll take a minute to settle down, not to worry. Um, with the eyes right here, you're going to use the tip of your peeler to just remove them. 
work as quickly as you can. Um, that right there, I could either take a knife and cut it out or just do it a couple more peels. Got a lot of eyes on this guy. And remove them. And I'm gonna go to my garbage can with this right here and just dump it all in there. Please don't try to uh, do that over the top of, of the garbage can, it makes a mess. Now this time it says I'm gonna cut these guys into larger pieces, about half an inch. So that's about, mm, maybe the thickness of your finger. Again, if we cut them too small, they're gonna turn into mashed potatoes. And if they're too big, then I'm gonna end up with um, the potatoes not cooking all the way through. So I'm looking for about the thickness of my finger and cutting those into some cubes. All right, quickly, 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 because I got some uh, that water's ready for me. And as soon as we're done with that, then we'll go ahead and as it says on step number five, place the onions, the carrots, the potatoes into this water. Lift that lid away for you, from you, not towards you. And then we will just pop those babies in there. There goes the carrots, or sorry, the potatoes. There goes the carrots, and there go the onions. And notice my water's stopping boiling. So I'm gonna pull that back up to high, put the lid on, and when I see that steam starting to go crazy, I'll reduce the heat again so that um, I don't again lose all of that moisture. All right, while that's cooking, it says that I also need to prepare my broccoli. Why do you suppose I don't put my broccoli in right now? Did you say that it was because the broccoli would cook faster than those ingredients, those other vegetables? Well, if that's what you said, that's 100% true. I'm gonna cut these off into small bite-sized pieces and I'm gonna come from the bottom size here and I'm just gonna cut through the little bit of that stem that's right there. And the closer, the outside ones are gonna be bigger and the inside ones are gonna be smaller. Again, this has already been pre-washed. I could work with that stem if I wanted to. Peel off the outside skin. It's kind of tough and uh, pithy, but um, I'm not going to today. I'm cutting these again just into small pieces, and notice I'm not doing it from the top side. I'm doing it from the bottom side where the stem is. Cut halfway and pull it apart. Cut halfway, pull it apart. That's going to be a smallish bite-sized piece. I don't wanna have a piece that big go into my mouth in my soup, no. All right, so I've got these all cut now, prepped, and as soon as this is coming to a boil, I'm looking for it, I'm watching it, I'm gonna cook that for eight minutes. I'm gonna to have to hustle on this to get it done in time. All right, those are all small bite-sized pieces. Ooh, that one I think needs a little bit more help cutting down, just a touch. Okay, and then I'm gonna just place them in this bowl and they'll be ready to go in with my other vegetables as soon as they have cooked for eight minutes. Still not simmering, but I can see it's starting to wiggle. Maybe you can too. The water's just starting to, to, um, to come to a boil. It's not quite there yet. All right, while that's happening, I am also going to be working with my medium-sized saucepan to make this white sauce. Um, that's kind of, uh, it has another name, it's a petromel sauce, but this right here, we'll just worry about it being called a white sauce. I'm going to turn my heat on to medium, and then I'm going to pull over some other ingredients right here, so they're, they're at my fingertips. And the first thing that I'm going to do in step number one on the meanwhile, down here, step number one on the meanwhile, I'm gonna get this going. So you're gonna have lots of things going at the same time. Boy, I can almost see that water simmering. Almost, just I want a little bit more, just a touch more before I set my timer. Um, <clears throat> we are uh, going to be adding to this um, both salt and pepper and flour. And I'm gonna go ahead and it's okay for me to add these other ingredients in while I'm waiting. So here goes, first off, my salt. And again, the salt is um, going to be adding a little bit of weird, I know it sounds weird, it's gonna be helping to bring out some natural flavors that are found in this, in this uh, sauce. I'm gonna level that off, that's one half teaspoon of salt, pop that in there. 
I'm gonna also add in some pepper and you have a pepper container in your kitchen. So you'll go ahead and pull that out using that straight edge along that top portion. I have it overflowing and then I'm gonna level that off. Go ahead and pop that one in there. And then the last thing is some flour. Now the flour is gonna be a thickener. So I'm just gonna kind of give this a little bit of a whir right there. Looks like I'm boiling, so I'm gonna reduce the heat. I'm gonna keep it, I wanna make sure it's still cooking, but I'm gonna set my timer now for that eight minutes. So pardon me while I walk away and put eight minutes on my timer. Coming back, um, looks like I got more of that melted. I don't really have to wait for it to be melted all the way, just kind of nice and easier. This is a very, very, very thick white sauce that we are making. And I guess I can stir with the spoon that I got out for stirring with it. And let's measure out five of these. This is gonna make almost like a paste. There's one, and I can scoop it with just the small measuring spoon. I don't need to worry about spooning it in. There's two, here's three, here's four, and here's five. Now students, if you notice, coming back to this right here, that you start seeing steam coming out the side, you're gonna wanna reduce that a little bit more. You wanna maintain the boil, but you don't want it blasting out the sides. All right, we'll go ahead and stir this right here, and it's gonna make a lovely little paste. Can you see this is ooh, kind of weird looking? But I'm stirring this all the way down even though it's mostly all combined, I'm stirring it till I don't see any lumpy bumpies. You can see that it's kind of sizzling. That's the boil that you're looking for. The, mi the mixture itself doesn't have to be like lava boiling. Okay, and they've got that all mixed in. Almost had a little pocket hiding, didn't I? Gonna get that all mixed in till it's all combined. I know I can see those edges simmering. Then on step number um, three, it says remove the mixture from the heat. This is critical. This is critical because if you don't remove it from the heat, you're gonna end up burning that milk. Remember what it's called when milk burns? Did you say scorch? If you did, you are 100% correct. Moving some of these ingredients out of the way. I have already measured the milk and the way that I'm gonna be putting this in is very carefully, very slowly. Watch this, just a little bit. Ooh, it's still sizzly hot in there. So get that stirred in quick. A little bit more, just slowly, slowly. And I can feel, and you will too, this kind of being pasty on the bottom of my pan. It's true, that's that protein that's found in that milk that's reacting with the heat. And you're doing this so slowly and letting the moisture be absorbed by that um, flour mixture. If you pour it in all at once, you'll have lumps. The flour all clam together, but if you put it in slowly, then the flour's willing to absorb the milk. You'll get probably about two thirds of the way through adding this in super slowly before it's all the liquid. And then once it's all the liquid, then you can uh, finish putting the rest in. But right now I'm just adding a tablespoon at a time tablespoon at a time and again I'm off my heat and I'm scraping that bottom to get it all mixed in evenly and stirring that in boy my arm's starting to burn a little bit as in put that down I'm gonna add a little bit more and then stir it in reminds me a little bit of an old wife's tale about cooking and uh, the story goes about uh, how do you cook a frog? Maybe you've heard it. If you take a frog and you put it into some boiling water, as in you put it in real quick, this frog is smart enough to know that it's awful hot and it will take and jump out. <clears throat> but if you put a frog in a pot of cold water, the story goes, if you put the, pot in, if the frog in a pot of cold water, well, he doesn't know that it's getting cooked and slowly, uh, as you turn the heat up, it warms the water. Frog's not noticing much. Gets warmer and warmer. Frog's not noticing that big change. And pretty soon, that frog is cooked. <clears throat> Doesn't even know it. So that's how slow we are right here. It's the story of the frogs coming in handy. 
Stir that. Can you see how nice and smooth that is? That's a good sign. We're doing it right. There's not any chunky lumpies, but again, we're just adding this, stirring, 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 which is our middle name when it comes to making the white sauce. All right, <clears throat> add this in. I'm almost to the point where it's all a liquid. I can go maybe a little bit faster, but not quite there, not quite there. Oh, getting more and more runny. And I am one more little slow time until I feel like it's really runny. And once it's all runny, the flour isn't going to be lumpy, which is where I'm at right now. It just pours it right off, pours it right off. Then you can take your milk and you can pour the rest of it in. All right, you're going to quickly get that back onto the burner, which is still on medium heat. And now we're going to go that, oh my gosh, slow and low, stirring constantly, which is milk's middle name. I'm gonna cheat just a little bit because I'm doing this all by myself. I need to uh, get some cheese grated. So I'm gonna just quick go wash off the countertop, come back and stir, quick start grating the cheese. And I'm just gonna keep stirring intermittently, but mostly stirring, only a quick break. You here at school are gonna have a whole um, group that you're working with so somebody could stay and stir the milk. I do wanna say one thing about stirring the milk though, is you're not going super, 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 super fast while this is cooking, because you could slow down the whole cooking point to the part where maybe if you're fast enough, it wouldn't get hot at all. So you're just gonna kind of do um, back and forth, kind of like a lazy summer day st stir. Can I call it that? Nice and slow. I'm going back and forth one direction. I'm gonna go circles on the outside, circles on the inside, um, zigzags back and forth, and I'm constantly scraping the bottom. Right now, I'm not necessarily feeling a whole lot. That is a little bit of thickening that's happening right there. I don't know if you can make that out in the video. But I'm gonna just stir this ever so lazy and slow. Notice that my vegetables are still in there just a simmering away. I only have a few bits left. Let me go get my washcloth real fast, okay? I wanna keep that countertop clean so I don't have to worry about the bottoms of pans later on. Okay, coming back and stirring. Coming back and stirring. I'm feeling a little something, a little something. All right, I'm gonna step away and grab my cheese. This is cheddar cheese and of course cheddar cheese is a milk product. Um, cheddar cheese was created in a town called Cheddar. I know, how clever is that? In England, and it is one of the few cheeses that's colored. Cheese is not naturally orange, cheese is naturally white. Why do you think it's naturally white? I hope you said, because that's the color of milk. That is true. So I'm just gonna stir this a little touch, and then I'm gonna get my uh, grater ready. You could, um, you can choose a thick or the fancy grate. I'm gonna choose the big one. All right, maybe you can hear that in the back. That was my timer right there going off. So eight minutes is over. I'm gonna take this lid, let that steam go to the back of the stove top. And I'm gonna pop these veggies in. I sure hope there's room. That's pretty tight. Put that lid back on. I'm gonna look for that temperature to come back up to a boil. It stopped boiling because I took out, all, uh, took out a touch of its heat. I'll remove this uh, real quickly out of the way. And let's stir this again. I don't wanna abandon ship. I don't want that bottom to burn. Oh, I can feel there's some things going on down here. I can feel it. Just keep stirring that away. All right, so back to the grater. We're gonna do the big grate. Um, and you remember that this is also a form of a knife, so you wanna be careful. You do not want to cut your fingertips with that grater. Grate any excess fingernails or anything else in between. And get that all the way down. We're grating the cheese and putting it in the milk um, into that white sauce while it's hot and it's gonna cause the cheese to melt. 
I don't put in a big chunk because it would take too long for it to melt. All right, let's come back here. Um, I've got some simmering going on right here, so I'm gonna reduce my heat again, and I'm gonna go set the timer for an additional eight minutes. So if I have to cheat on this one just half a second. We'll do as best as we can. But you're gonna be moving fast. You can see if you got all these pots on the stove, you've gotta move fast. Oh, I'm feeling something happening on the bottom of my pan. Now, your instructions tell you that you're gonna put in one cup of grated cheese. And I've given you enough cheese for not only that one cup, but I've given you enough cheese to um, also have a little bit of a garnish with it. So let's go ahead and put in that one cup into our dry measuring cup. And then we'll leave the other off to the side as a garnish for each one of your, your uh, um, individual servings. Okay, The little black things that are floating on the top of my um, white sauce right here, do you know what that is? Did you say pepper? That's correct. So the heat's going ahead and it's kind of having its uh, um, chemical reactions even happening that are caused by heat. And I'm starting to feel that protein on the bottom. Can you see this right here on the pan? Can you see that? It's starting to stick just a touch to that pan and continue stirring, stirring. This will all come together about the same time, but you have to be a touch patient. I've got this fork right to the side of my um, uh, vegetables because I'm gonna check to see if they are done. Do you remember what the stage is called? when you cook what you cook vegetables to. If you said tender crisp, you are 100% correct. So I'll just go ahead and stir this gently all the way, making sure that we're scraping that bottom constantly. One of the things happen, that happens too is this white sauce gets thicker. The pepper that's floating on the top right now will not be floating on the top, but it will be all down at the bottom. And this is the point where sometimes cooks become a little bit mm, anxious, frustrated, say, I gotta hurry this up. But you don't hurry up good cooking. You be patient with it. You just scrape the bottoms so I can feel this. This silicone spoon is kind of funny in stopping it from uh, letting it really stick good onto the bottom. I'll also find that if I put a a spoon into this mixture when it's nice and thick enough that um, it will coat that metal spoon. That's another sign of knowing that you've cooked long enough. All right, looking good, feeling it. I know that my white sauce is also cooked thoroughly enough if it starts, if I see one, one boil, can I call it that? One blop from a boil and I am gonna stop right there. That is all the way I'm going. But right now I'm still pretty runny, still pretty liquidy, still pretty like it's just a little bit like milk. So you have to be patient, you have to be patient or you're gonna end up scorching it. Looks like I've got steam coming out of my vegetables. So I'm gonna lower that temperature. I wanna maintain the simmer can you see that it's simmering inside that lid? I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you can see that the steam's coming out. So I drop the temperature a little bit, and if it still keeps coming out in a minute or so, then I'm going to um, drop it a little bit more. All right, I've done everything I can do except for be patient. Be patient, be patient. Still on a medium temperature. Be patient. Sometimes if you're doing a big pot of soup like this, um, you are going to um, find that this actually takes maybe as much as a half an hour to get this thickened up. I can sense just a little bit of creaminess going on with this right now, just a little bit of thickening. The milk that I chose to use was a 1% milk. Um, 
That, of course, is what the dietary guidelines and my plate recommend that most Americans get is either skim or 1% and you can cook just as easily with 1% as you can with whole milk. The, uh, some recipes, instead of using um, milk, will actually use uh, other milk products. Maybe you've heard of half and half. Half and half is basically half milk and half cream, and of course it makes a delicious soup. But the problem with that delicious soup is, mm-mm, also lots and lots of calories. And can you tell this is getting a little bit thicker? Can you tell that? I'm just being slow, stirring back and forth, back and forth. I can feel it on the bottom of the pan. Look at that right there. Oops, that maybe wasn't so smart. But you can see that thick on there. Yep, it's coming. That's kind of sad that I spilled all over there. Can you hear it sizzling? Because with that sizzle, guess what? It means I got a bad cleanup I'm gonna have to make. Oh, this is coming, but I'm still not quite there. I still am not feeling it. I haven't seen one bubble yet. I am starting to see a little bit of foam coming around the outside edges of the pan and that is called scald. You heard of that um, phrase scalding hot? When something's scalding hot, that's pretty darn hot, but it's not a boil. That's the stage that we're at right now. Sometimes we'll scald milk in certain recipes, um, especially bread recipes, because bread recipes have um, uh, the milk that's in there will, inter will interfere with yeast that's trying to give off the carbon dioxide gas. All right, we're still there, it's still thick. Can you see that? All right, we're almost there, but not quite. Go ahead and stir that in. Now, everybody has their own individual preferences as to how thick they like their soups to be. This is, you're gonna find out for me, I like mine really thick. And if you wanted to have it be a thinner base, then all you have to do is not put in, instead of five tablespoons of flour, just put in four. And you will also be able to use the broth that these vegetables have uh, to thin it out as well. All right, I'm pretty good. Can you see that is really, I'm gonna try to do this without spilling. That is nice and thick on there. Oh, look at that. I got some boils going. At that point, my friend, we're saying we're done. I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'm gonna put my hot pad over here on the countertop so you can see this nice and thick, nice and thick and creamy. Let's give it a couple stirs. Your instructions tell you, you can go ahead and put some of the reserve liquid in there but um, it's not quite done, probably really close. So while I'm waiting, it's okay if I put the cheese in right now. I'm not gonna put it all in one clump. I'm gonna kind of spread it around, stir it in. Oh, there's my timer right now. Stick that in there, stir it around. Stick this in here and stir it around. I'm gonna stir that until it all melts down and we'll turn it into a cheese sauce. Let's check our veggies. Ooh, that's nice and hot. Let's turn off the heat. It smells yummy. I'm gonna take a fork and I'm gonna pierce that. Oh, vegetable, it's just perfect. Carrots are just perfect. So my instructions back at the top say that I'm going to put this in a colander, which I am doing. And we got a couple of them that are kind of stuck under the bottom of the pan. We'll go ahead and let them drain. Let's stir this, get this cheese all the way melted. You see that's just blending in there. Got two pieces of cheese stuck on that handle. Just gonna stir that down. Oh, this looks delicious, delicious. And I'm gonna take this drained vegetable and pop this all in here and stir that all nice and around. Oh, that's thick, can you see that? Oh, delicious, delicious. Yum, yum, yum. All right, um, if you wanted to thin it out, you can put, this is uh, nutritious, it's a broth, a vegetable broth. You could put a little bit in. 
Put a little bit more in, however you want to have it thin down. That's all your choice. And then, of course, you're going to put these into your individual. We'll just have you have some um, hot, cold cups. And we'll pretend like this is just one hot, cold cup. Um, and then you would take your cheese and put that over the top as a garnish. Don't stir it in until you're ready to eat. It's always kind of fun to have that. And that, my dear friends, is some off-the-farm, off-the-farm, creamy vegetable soup. I hope you enjoy. We'll see you. Bye.